Welcome to the Billingshurst Family Church Podcast. For more information or to support our work in Billingshurst and the surrounding areas, please visit billingshurstfamily.church. I've been fighting this week to not get caught up in the madness of all this bulk buying and uh, panicking about everything that's going on. Um, and I had this moment earlier this week where I thought I'd bought a whole load of bread flour. I found my way to this wholesaler's website. And I was like, brilliant, they've got loads of stuff in, so- in stock. Um, they've got loads of flour and loads of rice and all the stuff that the stores are running out of. I thought, brilliant, I can go and get that stuff. I can order that stuff. It'll be here by the end of the week because this week I have learned how to make bread from scratch. And I was really proud of myself. I thought, brilliant, I can now make bread. I've got enough flour to make 100 loaves of bread. Uh, I will be absolutely fine, or well, probably 200 loaves of bread. Um, be absolutely fine for running out of food. At least I can provide bread for my family. And uh, I was waiting in on Friday when the parcel was supposed to arrive. And uh, it arrived on the front doorstep. And I was down the shed and uh, my wife texted me and said, Craig, the parcel's here. I was like, brilliant my flour has arrived I can go down and get my fresh yeast out the box and I can get my fresh flour and start making bread and uh, come up with all these ideas for how we can do that and um, I went to the front door to open the door because obviously you know they weren't going to bring it in being such a heavy box and uh, I went down and I, it was on the doorstep I was like oh that's a bit smaller than I thought it was going to be and I picked it up I was like this is a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be I brought it into the house, I had a look inside, and there was no flour in the box. And uh, obviously what would happen, well, obviously what I did is I went and checked the bill. I said, like, hang on a minute, they missed something here. I uh, checked the bill, and it's was like, uh, oh, no, no, there's no flour on the bill. And uh, I turned, I, I said to Karen, I said, oh, I must, have, I must have not ordered it. And what probably happened is I had a moment of sanity in the ridiculousness of all that was going on and said, I don't need 48 kilos of bread flour um, in, any, in any case. And I just took it out of my, my basket. And I had you know, other stuff that I got. I'm really glad we've got. Um, but uh, it was just this moment of trying to get everything in that I thought we'd need, uh, which in reality we don't need, didn't need. Um, and uh, yeah, so I don't know why I was doing that. Um, the other thing I found as well in this, in this situation with all this COVID-19 going on and stuff like that is I found myself wanting to grumble and moan and uh, seeing things on social media and messages from people as well. Like, oh, it's so crazy, all this stuff's going on and I just want to join in. It's like, yeah, absolutely. It's ridiculous that this is happening. Why, why is this happening? Why are our freedoms being taken away? Why can't we do the stuff we want to do? And I found myself noticing that I've got this attitude towards it. And I started trying to fight that temptation because it just isn't helping me. It isn't helping me in any way, shape or form. It's not helping my family either because I'm grumpy of all that's going on. Um, and I think the thing is that we all uh, have to fight this temptation. We all have been fighting this temptation, possibly. or We've been giving into it. Um, and we're all getting caught, we could all get caught up in what everyone else is doing in times like this. When we see on the news, empty shelves, we see it on social media, we're all going, oh my word, we've got to do something about this. And uh, it's made me ask the, ask the question, do we grumble and moan about the situation like everyone else? Is that what we're doing? Is that what you're doing at the moment? Should we go out and, and get loads of food? Should we be going to the supermarket? raising the shelves, get as much in as we can, um, far more than we need, just because everyone else is. And there was a story that stuck out to me uh, from the Bible uh, for this time when I was thinking about this, when I was questioning myself, are, are my motives right? Am I trying to do the right thing or not? You know, are, are we all doing the wrong thing? Um, and that was the time of the Exodus where Israel left Egypt. and Mo- They were led by Moses out of Egypt after the plagues and uh, finally Pharaoh gave in and after (laughs) Moses had said let my people go Pharaoh finally gave in and they left. Uh, This whole nation of Israel swarmed out of Egypt and um, 
there were these the plagues. Pharaoh let them go. And uh, there's this wonderful bit in Exodus chapter 13, uh, verse 21 to 22, uh, where it says this. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light that they may travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. God was with them. The people of Israel were leaving slavery, leaving everything behind that they'd known, and, and God was with them. They had the physical presence of God in the fire and in the smoke, and uh, he was leading them out of Egypt. And Pharaoh has a change of heart. So Israel are leaving Egypt. They're off on their way out to, to go to the promised land. And um, Pharaoh has a change of heart. Pharaoh's annoyed. He's angry that his nation has lost their slaves. And so he saddles up his chariots, gets his chariots all set up with the horses, and they charge on down to cut the people of Israel off on their journey. Um, and as Israel come up and they encounter in the distance, they encounter the army of Pharaoh, their spirits sink, they start to grumble, they start to panic, and oh no, what's going on? And um, you know, the Bible, in the ESV in chapter 14 of Exodus, uh, Exodus it says, um, behold the Egyptians were marching after them and they feared greatly, and the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, they said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would be better for us to serve the Egyptians uh, than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said this to the people. And I love this passage, this verse. Moses said this to the people. Fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you only have to be silent. The, fear not, the Lord fights for you. The people of Israel are grumbling and moaning because they're, they're, they've gone from a situation that was their normal, and now they're coming against the potential death, and they're grumbling to Moses about it. You know, they're likely to die very young in Egypt, but here they're... Uh, out in the wilderness likely to die very soon if they encounter the Egyptians, if they go to war with the Egyptians. And so, you know, Moses says, you know, be, be fear not, the Lord fights for you. And they go, they're down on the edge of the sea and the this pillar of fire and smoke comes from the front of the nation of Israel to the back to stand between them and the Egyptians. And, you know, God is protecting the Israelites um, by putting himself between Israel and Egypt. And we know the story. Moses holds his staff out over the sea and the sea parts. The wind blows up the sea parts and the Israelites go across as though on dry ground. Um, and they, they walk across. They make their way across. The Egyptians are scared of the glory of the Lord that they see. They see this pillar of smoke and fire come over them. And they are scared. But they pursue Israel. And um, Israel gets out and Moses is told by God to say to hold his staff out again. And the, the sea and comes crashing back down and it wipes out the Egyptians, uh, completely wipes out their army. And the Israelites see all that God has done. They see his saved salvation in that day that he wiped out the army. Took, out, took care of that battle on their behalf. He cared for them. He looked out for them. He protected his own. And so Egypt's on the edge, uh, Israel, sorry, is on the other side of the sea. And they celebrate. They have this big party. There's dancing and tambourines and singing of what God has done. And it's a wonderful moment. And then they go on to enter the wilderness. And 
for three days as they're wandering in the wilderness, they find they can't find water. And when they do find it, finally, when they find it, it's bitter. And so they turn to Moses and they grumble at him again. What's going on? When we were in Egypt, we had water. We're, what's going on here? You know, this stuff is bitter. Um, and God hears their grumbling again. And he goes and he gets uh, shows Moses this tree. And Moses picks this pit, pit of log up and he throws it into the water. And the water becomes clean. It's an amazing miracle of water that once was bitter that has been made pure and able able for people to drink um, so God provided this water for them they had water in Egypt they were grumbling about it and God gave the water they needed and not only that they then went on to another place at Elim where there was uh, springs of water fresh water coming up and there were palm date trees they were able to eat fresh fruit and have good water in that place you know God took them from a, to show him show the people that you know I will provide for you. I will look after you. Here, go and see my, uh, go and see all I can give you. And uh, they get to enjoy the water and the fruit in the place of Elim. Um, so wonderful, everything's resolved, everything's sorted. And, but then they, they had to go on again, they had to move on. And they walked into the wilderness and they found themselves hungry. They'd left the dates behind. Uh, and again, when they found themselves hungry, again, guess what they did? They grumbled. They moaned, um, you know, they're like, in Egypt, we had pots of bread and meat that we could eat from. Um, it was easy. It was there. Slavery was better than this. The situation they had in Egypt where they were slaves, not their own masters, under control, uh, was better. The situation they had there was better than the situation they found themselves in. Even after they'd seen God uh, destroy the army of Egypt, seeing God make dirty water pure, Seeing God take them to a place of uh, amazing provision with all this, all the dates and the water. And so they moaned again. And what did God do? Well, he rained down manna from heaven, this bread from heaven, um, and a sweet bread like wafers and honey. Uh, and you can just imagine it's a really sweet tasting thing to eat that every day. And it's really sweet and lovely. Um, and then each evening God provided them with meat in the form of quails, <coughs> which they could have. Um, and so every day they had bread and meat. Um, and there's this wonderful moment in Exodus where the, God says that they should have take enough for each day. Don't store it overnight, except on the, on the day before the Sabbath when they could collect a double amount and then have that. And it would last them for the Sabbath day as well. Um, and uh, some of them did try and store it. They, they didn't trust God's provision. And they try to bulk store it all and collect it all up. And go, oh, if we've got loads of it, then we're going to be fine for ages. Instead of trusting in God, they collected it all together. And when they did that, it just decayed, filled with worms and horrible things. And it was like God saying, Look, I will provide for you. you don't need, I don't want you to get your provision anywhere else but in me. And I think this story is, is, is great because you just realise how much the Israelites loved a moan. They love to grumble and moan and go on about, oh, it's so hard. Oh, woe is me. Isn't it so difficult at the moment? Well, it was better when we were in slavery. Um, what they don't re didn't realise was that God was with them. Through all of the trials, all the difficulties, God was with them. The pillar of fire and smoke didn't depart from the people. God went ahead of them. He led them wherever they were going. And they were in a new situation. OK, they found themselves in this new normal and to learn about the new normal where before they'd known where the bread was they'd known where the meat was they knew where the water was they knew where they had to go to get those things and it was easy to go and grab it and that's that's where you built your life around you built it around your provisions and in this new normal this new situation they had to rely on God for their needs they had to rely on him to fulfill everything that they needed it was a completely change of scenario change of scenario And to them, that change, it made them hark back to something else. It made them hark back to the time of slavery when they could get all that they needed in a different way, even though they had no freedom. The freedom they now had looked less valuable than the slavery they had before. Um, and I think we sometimes give the Israelites a bit of a hard, 
hard deal. Maybe I'm giving a bit of a hard deal. I don't know. Um, but change isn't all bad. Change is hard to deal with, but it's not all bad. Um, there was a reason for their for their fear. There was good reason for their fear because it was such a big change. I don't know about you, but it's like when the biggest time in my life where things changed um, to have more restrictions and more difficulties, um, you're suddenly thrown off kilter. You don't know how to handle it. Um, but the, the amazing thing is, you know, although they were scared in this new situation, the amazing thing was that God saved them. God saved them firstly from the Egyptians, then he saved them from their thirst, and he saved them from their hunger. He provided for all of their needs. He saved them from everything standing against them, and he showed that he was sufficient to cover all their needs. And so even though they had seen all that, they still held on to the past. They still held on to the old thing. Um, you know, everything had changed. They come at a situation where everything was one kind of normal, and now it was different. And I think it's interesting for us today that we're facing a new state of normal. We're in a state of change at the moment. The old normal has gone where we'd, you know, get everything we need uh, and we'll just, you know, happily go on getting the bits we need. And if there's a good deal on, we get a load of stuff. Um, but there's a new normal now. We're in a state of change and change is hard to deal with. And so often it leads to moaning and groaning and grumbling. But change isn't all bad. OK, yeah, we're in a bad situation at the moment. It looks pretty bad. This whole COVID-19 coronavirus thing looks pretty bad. And to be honest, it's likely to get worse. Um, but even at this point, good has come forth. Um, you know, community groups and churches in our area, in our community, are working together to help people. Community spirit is flourishing at the moment. Um, and as a church, we're right in the middle of it. Or BSC, Boone First Family Church, are right at the middle of everything right now, helping to coordinate things and provide help to the neediest in our community. And the great thing is, that in doing this and acting in this way, we get to share the love of Jesus in our actions as we work with others to help people so who are socially isolated in their homes. Uh, it's a great privilege and a great responsibility for us to do that, uh, you know, to share God's love with people as we provide for them, as we show provision for them. If we think back to Israel, uh, the Israelites, you know, in spite of all their moaning and all their grumbling, God looked after his people. He looked after his own. He looked after his people. And he does the same today. You know, we might panic about the food. Are we going to get enough food in? Are we going to get enough, uh, you know, drinks in and stuff like that? Enough snacks? Is there going to be enough chocolate to go around? Are there enough loo rolls to go around? Um, you know, are we going to go on as people who are, who are grumbling in our conversations? You know, just keep moaning. We're going to worry about this. Oh, no, there's no loo roll. There's no chocolate. There's no this. There's no that. Oh, isn't it rubbish that this is going on? What are these silly people doing? You know, we're grumbling and grumbling and moaning and moaning. But we can have a relationship with the living God. We can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's get a bit of perspective. We've got a relationship with Almighty God. Or the opportunity to grumble and moan. You know, we, like the people of Israel, can see the salvation of the Lord, that he worked for them in their day. In our day, he still works. What about in your day? Israel struggled to trust God for their provision. They struggled to trust for their salvation, even though he was visually with them by the fire and the smoke. You know, there's no pillar of fire for us today, but in Jesus we encounter the salvation of the Lord. Through him we can trust God for all our needs. Matthew 6, 26 talks about, uh, Jesus says about that even the birds of the air get what they need. How much more will we get what we need from our good father who, who loves us and cares for us? In Philippians 4, 19, Paul, the apostle Paul writes that you know, God will supply every need that you have in Christ Jesus. Every worry quieted, right? He, he, can, he, he can do that. God can do that. Every anxious thought can be stilled by coming near to God. You know, earlier in that chapter, Paul talks about us needing to draw near in prayer. I preached on this just a couple of weeks ago. Check it out on SoundCloud. Um, but we, when we draw near to him in prayer, when we, we can know the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. 
Let's seek to be a people who trust in God to work his salvation in our midst, even in a time like this, where everything's unknown, everything's new, we're all worried about it. But let's seek to be a people who trust God <coughs> to work his salvation in our midst. Let's be set free from the worry that draws us to slavery uh, and, and instead live free in the knowledge that our good father watches for us and gives all that we need. Let us draw near to God in prayer for our worries and fears about our safety and the safety of our families. Let's draw near to him with our worries about provision. Let's draw near to him with our worries about having the kids at home for a while or being socially isolated in our own homes away from others for a little while. Let's come to him in prayer and get to know that peace that surpasses understanding. Let's not grumble, but let's live Let's live lives that are active in prayer for our community and our nations, for our hospitals and our leaders. Um, let's be active in showing the love of God to those around us. And let's consider, even if for a moment, that God might want to work his salvation in your life today. Are you ready to see it?